The first client I landed, like, taught me how, taught me everything. Taught me, just start now, do it earlier. Because it's my brand, it's my, it's, I'm doing it, of what I want stuff before you start something. The commerce process or funnel works. Giving yeah. free value to people, helping them for free, giving them free stuff. So I think that would be my most viral ad. Mm -hmm. And what 150 to 155 sales uh, on that ad. It's the fun part of the marketing for me. The market is also switching and that your ads aren't relevant anymore. Hey guys, welcome back to the Flawless Finance Podcast. We're back with another episode and today we're talking to someone who I've met called Ben. Now, Ben is a e-com ads specialist and is known for scaling e-commerce brands. He's a self-proclaimed e-com speed runner. And I've been engaging with his content on X for a while. And going off that, if this conversation is anything like his content on X, this conversation is going to be jam-packed with tons and tons of value. Buckle up, guys, and welcome to the podcast, Ben. Let's get straight into it. Hey, Ben, how's it going, man? It's good it's to good, have man. you on. Thanks, man. It's good to be here. Yeah. So I'll kick it off. So for yeah. Ben... Those of, us, those of us in our audience who aren't familiar with you, what service do you offer? Why does a client need this service? And what kind of results can a client expect when working with you? Yeah, man. So I target e-commerce stores, so floating brands mostly. I help uh, e-commerce stores who, ha who do like four figures a month. So in the thousands, basically. I help those ones. I scale them to five figures with ads and organic uh, UGC, which is user generated content, which is basically taking the product and making a video out of it and showing why people should buy your product and posting it on their social media. And also uh, I do the same with the ads, but yeah, that's basically what I do. And I think the marketing is important because as I've heard before, a business without marketing is like a car without fuel. You have your products, you have your services, but how do you deliver that without any energy or fuel, you know? So I think that's why people need my service. That's wow. Like I mean, important. yeah, that's, that's been, that's put brilliantly, bro. I'm yeah. interested that you decided the clothing brand route. So was there a reason why you've, you've gone down that route? Was it intentional or was that, just how it's worked out so far. I know that's a competitive space. It's hard to break into um, because often the costs involved with it are, you know, so high. So, yeah, what made you go down that route and sort of specializing in, in that sort of genre? Well, it wasn't on purpose. All my previous clients were clothing brands, so I figured I might as well just stick to them Yeah. <laughs> uh, since I have experience in them now. Yeah. Yeah. So... There, so these brands are, you know, they're on the ascent. So they're sort of building their way up and then they're coming to you. What sort of queries, what sort of questions are you getting asked from those clients? Is it like questions they ask me? Um, yes, yeah, so questions yeah. they're asking. So when when they want to, they obviously want to grow their business. They're coming yeah. to you. What's What sort of, you know, reservations maybe do they have? Are they, you know... Are they familiar with marketing? Are they, you know, putting a lot of trust in you? Are they saying, you know, this is our budget, we just want you to handle everything? Or what, what sort of thing does that look like? Early, early stages in that client acquisition. So usually that's that's why I target like higher uh, e-commerce brands in the higher space because usually the lower the, like the lower the brand, if they make like one or two figures, maybe it's, they, they usually don't trust the process. They're not familiar with the marketing and it, it, all of that. So that's why I do target higher acquisition or higher um, people higher in the chain, basically, because they are more familiar with the processes and what steps you need to take, and they are more willing to invest in it. So usually yeah. they ask how much, for, they, they don't ask why, they just ask how much, and then they're willing to give uh, the money for you to do it. Yeah. So when you got your first client i mean how did you go about landing your first client i suppose i'll ask my first client was like a friend i did for a friend okay so that's so, cool. so he sort of came to you i'm making this brand and you said hey i've got some ideas around marketing let's work together is that what it looked like or was there a bit more convincing or yeah what did that look like was he you know super willing to work with you yeah he just jumped straight on i was like 
I need some experience and you need um your clothing brand marketed and let's let's work together, man. So it was wow. quite easy. I think how important do you think that experience was to you? What were some of the major lessons learned from your first client? Oh, that experience was awesome, man. The the first client I landed, like taught me how taught me everything. Taught me market research, taught me the back end of ads, the front end of ads. It taught me like it built my foundation to like land the rest of my clients and help the rest of my clients. So the first one was really was the best step that I could have taken to actually build my foundation for the service that I do provide. Okay. And if you could go back and change one decision you made in your career, what would it be and why? Say starting earlier. <laughs> because yeah. I think uh, the more time you have to do something, the better you get at it. So I would definitely just like go back and tell my um, tell my younger self, just start now, do it earlier. You'll get so much more experience and actually be like 10 times better than you are right now. So I think going back in time and uh, starting at an earlier stage would have been the best thing I could have done. Wow. I mean, in my previous podcast, the exact same thing was, was said. He said, I wish I started it a few years earlier so then I could get those yeah. reps in early, make those mistakes early and just learn and, and grow from there. Um, I think that's probably a great message to our audience. You know, the, the best time to start is now. I mean, the second, the best time was yesterday. The best time is now. Um, yeah. I'm sure that's going to be a running theme throughout all my podcasts when I ask that question. I wish I started earlier. Yeah. So we're really interested to get that response from you. Um, obviously, on X, I know you from sort of where you've been developing your personal brand. Yeah. When developing a personal brand, you open yourself up to being vulnerable online. Um, how do you handle criticism or negative feedback especially when it's, you know, it's personal, it's about you, it's about your brand. How do you handle that? Or have you had to handle that? The best strategy for that is just don't care. Like they come with their criticism. They come and tell you what you're doing wrong, what you shouldn't be doing. And I just tell them, okay, cool. It's my brand. It's my, it's, I'm doing it. It's what I want to do. It's what I like to do. So your criticism doesn't have any part in my journey. So I just don't entertain any criticism or any, uh, negative negative comments or anything i just say that's your opinion you keep to your opinion and i'm on my journey i'm doing and i'm doing what i want to do wow i mean that's a really mature point of view i mean have you always thought thought like that or have you well when you're a bit younger did you have an experience where you're really affected by someone's criticism and that experience sort of made you into how you are now where you're kind of sort of bulletproof to that sort of negative criticism have you always been like that or was it a journey? I think when I was younger, I would I would take the criticism the criticism too hard and actually try to change change my ways, change what I'm doing, so that people don't like hate on me. So I think that change in the earlier stages did make me more immune to uh, criticism now. So it was a good thing, but now now I'm done with it. Now I'm just here and uh, letting it be. Yeah. Letting the criticism come to me. And right not taking it to heart that's it man that's it yeah. so is this the first is this your first business venture or have you had businesses in the past that maybe didn't work out but you learned loads of lessons from and those sort of lessons helped mold you into the sort of offer your your the sort of service you're offering today have you always been in business or is this is this quite new yeah a uh, few like a year ago i did start another business it was this thing of taking influencers and um showing them to other people or taking my influencers to businesses and helping them grow through influencer marketing. But it didn't end up working because I didn't know enough about the space. I didn't have any experience. I was just doing something that I thought would work, but didn't work out. So I think it really did teach me the lesson of know your stuff before you start something. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I think the, the worst thing you want is, the last thing you want is to be, talking to to potential client and then they're asking a question you've got no idea yeah. what how to answer it because you're supposed to be the subject matter expert you know yeah. any question they ask you should be able to answer not you know no so that, that's that's really good um so what less so the lessons in terms of knowing your stuff when starting this business what was the key information you had to know going into starting this this business 
I had to know how like s selling things online work since I do target online stores. I actually had to know how the, the back end works, how they get the products, how the front end works, works, how you get the products out there. So I really had to go in a deep study, study session and uh, really study how the whole e-commerce um, e commerce process or funnel works. Yeah. So it looks like even though you're sort of running an adver uh, advert service for yeah. your clients, you're still you know aware of that whole e-commerce supply chain, which it does impact the adverts. Of course it does. But obviously yeah. you're not being hired to know that, but it's good that you've got that additional knowledge. Yeah as well and i'm sure that's something that your clients really value your content and being a fan of it and you know yeah aren't answering a lot of your tweets and reading them i can tell you're really known for that strategic approach what's the one strategy that you're employing that you believe will define success long term for your business i would say i have this thing where i um preach free value like giving free value to people helping them for free giving them free stuff because I really think that's like the strategy to stand out um, nowadays to actually help people for free. Because it builds like this this network of people that that's willing to um, show your service to other people and that's willing to help you if you're in need and so on. So I think helping people for free just builds like a really strong, really strong network around you. So I think that could work long term, since some of the free work you do you you some of the free work you do does end up um, into paid work. So some people actually start, so, so so the whole free work thing actually does start working out. It's not like you're doing free work and getting nowhere. So I really think it's, it's, re, it's, it's really long-term. So I think having a great network of people that you did free work for uh, can get you much further because they can tell your service to other people. So I think it's really great to do free work. Yeah. No, it's, it's great. And I think a lot of people are agreeing with you. I, I agree with you. Doing that free work and be able to deliver that value, you'll find, I think, particularly in your space, people, they want to know that you can solve the problem rather than them knowing the, the knowledge themselves. They want to know that you know what you're doing because you deliver loads of value. And I'm sure loads of the for potential clients see that stuff but they're like well this guy clearly knows his stuff but you know it's not, yeah. we don't have the time we don't have the resource to implement that, that ourselves let's contact Ben and let's get him on a call and let's um, potentially work, work with you I think delivering that free work above all of course we're delivering that value but it's demonstrating your knowledge more than anything yeah. so obviously you run ads for creators and you mentioned the UGC content, which is, it's quite a new thing relatively yeah. in the social media space. What's been the most viral ad you've ever run slash created and what made that ad special? What made that ad more special than the other ones you've run? Yeah. So uh, I run my, my ads, most of the ads I run, I like right, running it on the pay-per-click payment model, which okay. you only pay, uh, you only pay money when people click on your ad. So I think the most viral ad I have had is a 4% uh, CTR click-through rate. It's like the 4% of all the impressions on the ad ended up clicking on the ad. So I think that would be my most viral ad. And what ended up, what ended up making it so good is was the creators were really targeted on the uh, brand's target audience. So it really spoke to their target audience. It really made them think, I want that product. So... I also think that's why market research is so important to target your ads to to that specific people, and not waste your money, of course. So I think yeah. that that would be my like my most viral success story I had with ads so far. So what what did that ad look like? Who was it targeted? That was it targeted there? Women, men, age demographics, locations. What did that look like? Yeah. So the ad was targeted to men and women. It was a unisex brand. We were doing a sports promo. So it was really targeted to people, to teenagers from like 14 to 18. So we had, it, had, it had a really big audience, if I can say it like that. And it was summertime. So, so we really had all the creatives together in one and it was really e easy to target for that one. So in, in terms of numbers, what was the budgets and what sort of revenue did that turn into for the client? 
yeah so we ended up making like 150 sales i think wow. which was i i don't know how much that was but i i didn't know the sales the sales was good i just can't re i think the revenue was like uh, maybe it was six thousand six to seven thousand i think um but the numbers the numbers aren't like uh aren't running through right now but but i do know we yeah. we ended up making uh, 150 to 155 sales uh, on that ad so it was wow. really good congrats really i mean good. i mean that's those are big numbers for yeah. the type of clients you're probably working with you know where you're saying that four to five figures i mean that's that's huge um, how yeah. long did, did that advert run for? Was it a couple of weeks, months? What what sort of duration was that? Uh, we ended up running the uh, the ad for three weeks, and then okay. we, oh wow, yeah, it, it it really worked. So we we thought we might as well just keep it running until it like starts declining. Yeah, so it was good. So you you mentioned that it was sort of fitness and uh, as a fitness product over the summer. Do you think? Do you think season-based products are effective? Do you think, you know, you could have a business that in the summer sells one product and maybe in the winter sells a different type of product? Or do you think it's best to have that one sort of consistent approach in advertising and brand awareness and sort of being known for one style of product rather than being a jack of all trades and master of none, to put it that way? Uh, being one brand selling, like, one line of clothing is important. But the seasonals, the seasonal times are also important because it like um, it gives you a reason to promote your clothes uh, for a for a certain audience basically. But I think hopping hopping around on trends like winter, summer, autumn can be a bad idea because uh, your clothing switches the whole time, so you're not putting like a, a proper brand image, proper brand um, clothing line, if I can say it like that. So I think staying a neutral one line and then doing promos as the seasons jump is a good idea. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. So what does your business look like in, well, I'll ask you in three, does it, how does it look like in the short term? What does it look like in the medium term? And what does it look like in the long term? So short term, I'll quantify as in the next six months to two years. Medium term, I'll say the next five years and long term, the next 10 years. So let's start off with short term. What does the business look like in six months or two years from now? Do you see yourself with more clients? Do you see yourself even potentially being the proverbial, you know, freelancing bachelor? Could you see yourself settling down with one company? Because um, I know that that's sort of, th sort of a thing where companies will maybe hire agency workers and then not agency, agency workers or freelancers and try and look that to bring that in-house. Um, yeah. what do you think that looks like for you? Well, I think uh, my current short-term goals is just to land more high-ticket clients, you know, just uh, bring in some more money. And I think in, in about six months or a year or maybe two, I might open an agency. Just thought I might need more experience before opening one. So I don't think I would go um, work for another company. I would start my own probably. And in the long term, five years maybe, it, it could really grow. I don't know. It, uh, I haven't thought so far ahead, though. I just know that I will be going, still be going at it for five years. So I think the if I do start an agency, it would really grow in five years. And for 10 years, I might just close down the marketing agency and start an education company and teach people how to learn their own high, high income skills. Oh, wow. OK. So you say yeah. high income skills. What sort of things would that involve? It would be like copywriting, marketing, of course, sales. Um, I don't know if coaching counts. No, not coaching. Um, copywriting. I would, yeah. I only have three on mind. The three like I'm learning the most is copywriting, marketing, yeah, I mean, and sales. I mean, the good the good thing about high income skills is you only need to know you know one high income skill. Yeah. You don't need to know a million different things if you're really good at copywriting you'll you'll make the money you'll you'll be you know paid um, accordingly from that same with i think video editing software design running ads another huge part of any e-commerce business you know that's a high income school for sure and i'm yeah. sure you're, you're finding that out with your successes with your with your clients would you say like you said that that was your biggest success what was one time when maybe the ads underperformed or you didn't get the results you were expecting. 
and we just switched them off. <laughs> <We didn't laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's the thing about split testing, like you have different, if I can say, ad sets where you uh, split test different one, where you split test one ad with like different key elements. So if like it performs badly, we just switch them off. We don't we don't really uh, report them or put them in in, in in anything. We just switch them off. Yeah. So it's not that so, bad. So when that happens, are you going back to the client saying we've run this? This is this really didn't perform well. We would advise you sort of staying clear of that sort of ad set going forward, or yeah. is it you're closing it down and you're sort of looking for more solutions? Uh both actually. We look for new solutions and we tell the client um, to not run that kind of ad again because it doesn't seem to convert. But we also do further split testing and further testing to see what else does work. Okay. So when in terms of the UGC, is it you producing that or are you, are you guessing the companies to produce that and then they're giving it to you and you're using that for ads what does that sort of look like so the company does give me the products so that i can actually make the video so i make the utc on my own i i enjoy making it it's like it's the fun part of the marketing for me so i like taking up taking the camera recording the products and so on so the the company does send me the clothes that i can use to record and then i just post it on the social media and bring in organic leads that way when a client wants to bring you on, are you sort of balancing the organic and the paid or are you focusing more on the paid or, or on the organic? What, what does that look like? Is there a balance to be struck there? I think, no, no. For, for the first two weeks, we, we usually do the organic content and then we switch over to the um, to the ads. But we, we, we still continue with the, with the organic content and so on but it's just less frequent. And whenever there's new drops, we usually end up, um, we we do, we continue with the UGC, but the UGC, UGC is two weeks before the ads and then we start running ads and then we just slowly still do the UGC basically. Okay. So when, so before, in that two week period before the ads start, how often are you uploading UGC content? Is it daily or every couple of days? How often is that? Every second day uh, I saw okay. works best. And is that on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, Facebook. Instagram. Okay. Instagram. Interesting. Interesting. And then you sort of keep X separate X's, you know, sort of for business. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. X is X know. is my thing, sadly. Yeah. In a constantly evolving market, you know, I'm sure even in the period you've been in this industry, the advertising space has changed loads. How do yeah. you ensure that you're always on top of the trends and your skills and services stay relevant? Um, competitors, man. Like there's uh, there's this thing you call meta gallery where you can see the ads of your competitors, what, what kind of ads they're running. And if you can see that most of your competitors' ads are like switching, then you can start to realize that the market is also switching and that your ads aren't relevant anymore. So that's that's how I see like market hops and market trends okay so was there a turning point in your life or in your career that made you realize that what you're doing now you're, you're on the right path was did you have a nine to five before or like you said you know different business ventures that didn't quite work out but you took lessons from what was the major turning point that took you in this direction um it was it was the previous businesses i saw that there is really potential in this and I thought maybe maybe if I just do it a bit better next time it could work out. So it was it was my previous experience and I'm glad for that. So it, it did lead me in a new direction. So I'm glad for it. And someone who wants to either start in this industry or start with a business similar to yours or someone that wants to work with you, what's one major misconception about your work that you'd like to clear up? I've got a few ideas, but love to hear it from you it's uh, it doesn't take time that it's easy work that um it's easy money and that um the ads ads are a really easy way to make money it's yeah yeah, yeah i think my, my answer would have been you know very similar you know that 
the work you're doing is, you know, valuable work, but you're not miracle workers. You know, you need budget and you need time to test things and to get, you need to, like I said, te- do the A-B testing initially, then get the data, get the, st- the statistics that you need to understand. Okay, we've ran it for this long. We've got a base of information. We now use that information to move forward. And then hopefully then those ads you run, you'll really see those those conversions and really see some good return on return on investment. And when you started this business, or for someone who wants to start this business, what's one piece of advice you would give them and and a, and a piece of advice that you wish you had received when you started your business? Put up social proof. Uh, like, do as many free projects as you can so that people can actually know uh, the work you're doing for them works and it builds more trust. So how does someone even start about going about going about getting that that sort of social proof and doing those free projects are you reaching out to guys on x what does that look like x emails instagram whatever you can maybe just friends like i did it like um i was lucky enough to have a friend who did e-commerce that i could help but if you don't have any friends you can just go like instagram dms emails we can even go on x start like your own small personal brand and uh, start reaching out to people and asking them to do free work for them it's the best way to build experience and social proof. Yeah. So has there ever been one huge challenge that you faced when running this business that, you know, sort of re- completely reshaped your entire idea of what you're doing? Was there a client that was hard to work with that didn't really manage expectations really well? What 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 does a bad experience look like for you? When they're not established, when they have like no social medias, uh, their product designs are a bit bad, uh, they don't know anything about ads. That's what made me decide to um, to sign a bit more uh, higher ticket clients and I don't have to struggle with any brand establishment and all that. So I think um, having that client that did not have an established brand was, was a good thing because it taught me to um, go a bit higher up the ladder. Yeah, I think that's going to be the tricky thing about a clothing brand where you can have a company with you know not a great design but wants to spend loads on branding or yeah. on advertising rather or one that's got a really good design but doesn't want to spend any money on advertising you've got one with a great product that nobody knows about and one with a bad product that everybody knows about so it's, yeah. it's a, they definitely are something difficult to, to balance and you know I can imagine even more so particularly in a, in a clothing brand yeah. if if you could achieve one thing with your business before you retire or close a business, what would that one thing be? Would it be, you know, scaling, seeing a business scale from, you know, four figures to five, six, seven figures, or would it be a more personal goal? What, what would that one thing be? For the business goal, I think one thing that I want done before I like close uh, my agency, for example, is taking a e-commerce brand from six to seven figures. That would be a huge achievement for me. And I think a personal one is just uh, to help as many people as possible, actually. My goal in the start was to um, help as many brands as I possibly can. So I think uh, reaching like the most number of brands that I can would be be a good goal for me. Yeah. And obviously, when you're doing this work, there's, of course, risk on yourself, but big risk on the clients as well, because they need to sort of show faith in you and trust that process. What's the biggest risk you've ever been a part of or biggest risk you've personally taken? And what did you learn from taking that risk? Putting a large budget on ads. Yeah. That's usually a large risk, but um, I, that's that's why I like do a lot of research before actually running the ads because I want to make sure I don't waste any money. And if I do end up uh, like not reaching the target that we set out, I usually give them like an extra two to three months free of free work until we do reach our targets. So oh, I wow. think there has to, has to come a guarantee with the uh, risk they're willing to take. So it's cool. Yeah. And so what motivates you to keep things going when things get tough? Because like you're saying, you've taken on that risk and you're determined to carry on doing that work until you get the results. So is it just that trust or that you want to repay that trust that they've put in you? Um, 
is that all kind of motivates you to keep going or what exactly motivates you to keep going when things get tough? Win, man. That's like my biggest motivation to actually, actually see the people I'm helping um, get results and do better and get better. So I think that's like my main, main motivation. So when I'm down, I'll be like, damn it, man, I have to get them results. Keep working. It's like my top, top motivation. And I suppose one of the last questions I'll ask you, what legacy do you want to leave behind, Ben? The best way or the best marketer and it's it's free value and um, helping as many people as possible, not keeping your eyes on on the money, but more on helping uh, more people. The more people you can help, the better. That would be like the main, main legacy that I want to leave behind. Wow. Well, I think you're definitely on track to do that. I think the value yeah. you're, that you're sort of putting out there on X, you know, I've been a, I've been a fan for a while. You know that we've been we talk we talk yeah. a bit, um, you know, re- really love your content. There's nothing else uh, from me. Have you got any questions for me? Yeah, man. What do you plan on doing with the podcast? Where do you plan on taking it? I think for now, I want to you know do as many as I can, as many as I can yeah. fit in my schedule. I think it's a great opportunity to really make meet some really knowledgeable and insightful people like yourself. It's a great opportunity to do that and really build a network. Um, something I've wanted to do for a while, we mentioned a bit before the call, so I've got this YouTube channel and was mo- yeah. for the most part making, you know, faceless content around finance, economics, politics. And then we've reached the monetization threshold. I'm thinking, okay, I want to speed up the growth even more. Let me, yeah. let's start doing some personal stuff with my face on it and my, my voice and everything. Um, and then, you know, just take it from there. And like I said, just now, you know, meeting great people, having great conversations like we've had um, today and building a great network, you know, like you just said, you're someone that's, you know, delivered serious results for your clients. You know, I'm glad that we've had this conversation. I've got a bit more knowledge around your offer. So I'm already thinking of a few people that have got e-commerce brands that I might be able to connect connect you with. It's not clothing, to be fair, but even if there's... No problem. Any 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 synergies, any conversations that are worth having, and a conversation won't hurt. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, that, that's really where I'm, where I'm planning to take it. Just keep keep running it, more content, and yeah, keep growing. That's a big goal, man. You're gonna be like the um, next Andrew Huberman podcast. Like that. <laughs> that's a good one. Anyway. Yeah, cool. that's a good podcast. Yeah, I definitely. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, likewise, and likewise, you know, you're 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 ahead of me, but I'm 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 gonna try. I'm trying to catch up. Um, and we'll we'll keep going. Yeah, we'll keep in touch. And I'm looking forward to definitely having you on again in the future when you've got you know even more clients, even more wins. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm I'm really really looking forward to seeing where your journey goes and where it takes you. Yeah. Yeah. Excited for you, man. Likewise, bro. Likewise. If there's nothing else from us, then we'll, we'll sign off. And yeah, that, that, that's been it from us. All right. Man. Thanks for listening, guys. Good. Thanks for having me, Ben. Thanks, Bye. man. Bye, guys.